Okay, so welcome to this uh, parallel session about 3D and 4D. Um, so we, we, we think that it's really important for, for us to understand what are uh, the ongoing projects on this, uh, focusing on this subject and also what could be uh, interesting for someone that does not already uh, implement this part of the development in uh, in the uh, in the local time machine project, access to this discussion, understanding more uh, about you, uh, what you are doing, and uh, what are the possibilities to uh, for exploring this this new part of. Of the uh, of the time machine application, um, so we uh, we have uh, five uh, spots uh, on three D and four D projects that are ongoing or are already finished, uh, and then we have more or less twenty minutes for discussion and for questions. So we talk. We'll talk about sustainability of the uh, of the type of approaches, um, but also um, technical issues, of course, uh, and then potentially uh, the uh, final destination. It means who are uh, the stakeholders interested in this development? Um, they are they municipalities? Uh, are they citizens? Of course. Uh, are they um, uh, startups or companies working on tourism uh, and so on? This is also very interesting because could be uh, also uh, an important uh, element for uh, who are um, deciding to uh, go in this direction, building a time machine that are a strong 3D for the uh, development components. Uh, so today it's a pleasure we are here with Toine Peters from Utrecht. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Toine. Uh, with Georgios uh, Artopoulos from the Nicosia Time Machine, Mario Mattis from the Ghent Time Machine, Ferdinand uh, Maiveld from Jena and Dresden Time Machine, and Valérie Gouet Brunet uh, from uh, uh, France, so Paris. Uh, from the Geographic um, National Geographic Institute, uh, with a project presenting a project called uh, Allegoria. Okay, maybe if you agree, we can start. Um, you have five or something more minutes for each. And uh, uh, Tony, I think that you can share your screen. You have problem. You can tell me. Uh, uh, thank you, Isabel. Um, uh, I have the honor to ask uh, Simon Derricks uh, to present. Uh, he is the AI expert within the Utrecht Time Machine. Uh, Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, and then we'll be joining the panel afterwards together. I'll share my screen. I think this is working for you, right? Brilliant. Yeah, OK, yes. Yeah. All right, I'll start my own timer. So I'll stick to the five minutes. We have a lot to share because we're used to education. I'll keep it short. Uh, so my name is Simon. Together with Tuan, I represent the Utrecht Time Machine. And specifically, I'd like to discuss the methodological and pedagogical approach of the Utrecht Time Machine. So we try to combine education, research, and impact. So I'll skip the general intro because we only have five minutes. But in general, we try to get across the history of our local city, Utrecht, to a broader audience. And we do this in a, a unique way, I think, through the Living Past course, which is a bachelor's course at our university. I'll tell you a little bit about the relation to the Utrecht Time Machine of this course and some lessons learned. So what is the Living Past course? We try to combine education, research, and impact. And normally, we work with a bunch of stakeholders throughout the city. Over the years, we have grown quite a big network of local stakeholders, um, but together with students, we just start to interact with these stakeholders throughout the city. So we call Living Past, the university course, Utrecht Time Machines Playground. And with students, the goal is to design and develop an innovative historical storytelling application for the city of Utrecht. So this is done in a transdisciplinary manner. Uh, student teams consist of multiple disciplines and it's really hands-on. So in 10 weeks, they actually get to create uh, a functioning prototype throughout the course. 
So what do we do? We take history and data, we combine it with a technological approach and education. And in this sense, we form some sort of community with a shared objective of sharing history in an innovative manner. And maybe it's best if I just give a concrete example of the last iteration of the course, which finished only two weeks ago. Uh, I think this is a really nice example. So some students interdisciplinary team wanted to make an educational escape room about the history of Zuiden, which is a region in Utrecht and had to be academically and historically grounded. So what happened is that on the right here, you have the students, right? An interdisciplinary team at the course. In the middle of the Utrecht time machine and through the Utrecht time machine, we matched them with the director of the museum of Zuiden, which gave them some information about the historical background. Moving on, you get to creating the actual escape room. So you now know the, uh, the environment a little bit better, but then you want to design an educational escape room. We matched them with Ellis Feldkamp, who's an educational escape room expert. And we kept doing this. So that when they were looking for historical sources, we matched them with someone from the Utrecht archives. You can already see that you're creating this network of stakeholders that's collaborating with the students to create a shared product, which I think is really nice. So we left them alone for uh, about 10 weeks. And then suddenly they had an escape room. It was done and they presented it in the local museum during our final live stream where presented and celebrated their work. Wim van Schadenburg, the director of the museum said, this is absolutely usable. I'd like to fund this. How can we take this to the next step? I think it's a brilliant example of combining history and data with local stakeholders in the community, a technological approach and a learning process for all the students. Some other examples, because we've done this before, uh, some students have recreated medieval recipes and written about the uh, Dutch food. We had a team do VR application where you could draw these time windows, so windows through time, where you could walk through to see uh, Utrecht at a different place or time. Under the Lime Trees was a visual novel about making complex ethical choices in the Second World War. And in the very first iteration, one high school student uh, recreated a public restroom that's not there anymore, just based on blueprints from the Utrecht archive. So you can see a wide variety of projects and prototypes. And I think in that sense, living past as a testing ground for us is the creative spark, right? So we try out ideas in 10 weeks together with students. It's a practical and real world learning experience for them. We noticed that the students really bring the community in and the other way around. So it tends to be a really effective way of community outreach. And for us as the overarching Utrecht time machine, we get to cherry pick the very best ideas and integrate them into the final product. So I think that's it for now. My question for you would be, how do you go from a prototype to production, right? Because this is something we have done or need to do repeatedly. We have found a couple of different ways to do this, but I wonder how do you approach this, right? So when you have multiple prototypes, how do you take them to the next step? How do you decide uh, if it's good enough and how does this process go for you? I'd be very interested in that. If you have any questions or comments, uh, our email addresses are on the screen. Maybe I'll leave them in the chat as well. And then we can discuss uh, our method and uh, approach later in the panel discussion. And I think in five seconds, it's five minutes. So um, I'll stop talking and I'm looking forward to your uh, presentations. Thanks. Many, many thanks, uh, uh, Simon. So it's a very, very interesting example of how we can move potentially from the, uh, an academic uh, milieu and academic research uh, to potentially an outreach in a museum or also, uh, of course, why not a professional application of it for citizens. This could be very, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, so we take a look uh, to Nikosia Time Machine with Georgios uh, now. Hi, Georgios. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Um, sorry about that. Um, why I'm, I'm curious to understand why I don't see it's a, a selection to to share the whole screen. I can only share the uh, PowerPoint. Um, let me try and you tell me if it's. Uh, OK, it works. can you see the uh, full screen? Can you see my presentation yeah. in full screen or the presenter? Yeah. 
Okay. We, we love it. We see, we love it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Yorgos Artopoulos. I'm faculty at the Cyprus uh, Institute and uh, I'm responsible for the virtual environments uh, uh, lab we, we run here. I would like to thank you for, uh, to congratulate you for the, the event and to thank you for your uh, invitation today. Um, I will try to squeeze in as many information as possible and then we can return in my presentation, then we can return and, uh, during the discussion uh, session. So at the Virtual Environments Lab, we work uh, on immersive environments, urban modeling and digital simulation for the study of built heritage and the creative exploration of historical narratives. Um, these are the partners of uh, our uh, Nicosia Local Time Machine Consortium that's led by the Cyprus Institute. And uh, I, I just wanted to mention that all the data sets are uh, accessed and stored uh, on the Cypress Institute's high performance computer, which is also Cyprus's uh, national competence center in the framework of the EuroCC project. Now, regarding the data management, we are developing an integrated workflow that enables us to reuse data sets of various scales for different purposes. Uh, and spans from the scale of the architectural part uh, to a building and a whole cluster of, uh, of buildings. And crucially, this workflow goes beyond the representation of 3D data and deals with the post-processing of data, including the use of AI and building simulation, uh, building performance simulation to assist in uh, engaging different stakeholders in their respective uh, activity. The local time machine is developed uh, through several parallel activities that we are pursuing here. We started developing the, the platform when we collaborated first with the municipality of Nicosia in order to integrate in an interactive three-dimensional platform data regarding the future development of the city, for example, about uh, new building permits for high-rise buildings, as well as to visualize urban uh, infrastructure. Through externally funded uh, research that brings together key actors from the quadruple helix, including municipalities, the town planning authority, and professional and international bodies, we are working on the integration of an HBIM workflow in our pipeline in order to enrich the platform with linked metadata for the authorities to be able to monitor historic clusters. So this effort is about creating a time machine for the present and future of uh, our cities. In this context, we use methods that allow us to semantically enrich our uh, 3D building models with uh, information about their provenance, condition, and history. Data collection and curation involves not only the, the building scale, but also the neighborhood through aerial 3D documentation and remote sensing of environmental data. Of course, for this to become possible, we have to develop protocols for data collection and processing, as well as for handling metadata. We see here the process graph of the metadata operations we are developing for linking HBIM with 3D GIS and metadata of historical content, as an example. Besides uh, the work in progress that I showed, uh, uh, previously disseminated results include a time machine for the most significant sites on both sides of the buffer zone that divides the city of Nicosia. A time machine that brings together 3D reality capture data with photographs, drawings, and textual information about the monuments. This interactive application was uh, included in the permanent collection of the Municipal Museum. Uh, the same data set we uh, was used also uh, in visualizations of observed and simulated environmental data for raising awareness uh, about the shared imminent futures of our cities with regards to the impact of climate change in the solar belt zone. Uh, this course was presented through 360 stereoscopic interfaces in the 2017 Seoul Biennale of Architecture and Urbanism. We also use the same data set for conducting co-creation process for urban regeneration. In the past, we used it for the regeneration of one of the most archaeologically important and rich in heritage areas of the city uh, that, uh, that is neglected, the Paphos Gate neighborhood. And in this case, we used the time machine for spatial exploration of historic transformations of the neighborhood. And we staged several co-design sessions with stakeholders and local communities to co-develop an architectural proposal for the reintegration of the site in the pedestrian circulation uh, network. And significantly by using this virtual environment uh, to promote the idea to the authorities, we succeeded in helping them understand the importance of this intervention. And eventually last year, they included it in their uh, budget and they funded the, the project, uh, which will be completed, its construction will be completed uh, soon. 
And we were very pleased uh, when we saw that the special reporter of the United Nations in the field of cultural rights mentioned in her report to the Human Rights Council of the U UN General Assembly, our project as the only effort in the country that recognizes the diversity of narratives about cultural heritage. Uh, while also recently our methodology was awarded by an expert panel as one of the two best internationally practices of public space co-creation through playful ICT interfaces. And my last point, in the context of Daria, Eric and the Horizon 2020 project NEFOS Europe, we are developing tools to enable content generation and crowd uh, sourcing, including a user-driven online content management system, a mobile app for commenting and community building, a VR toolkit for the creation of interactive experiences uh, by non-technical uh, uh, experts, and an online platform uh, of 3D reality captured models of all architectural styles to be found in Nicosia that enables the public to study as well as to automatically segment and annotate 3D models of buildings by means of convolutional neural networks. And finally, in the context of uh, our Daria working group, we have recently started uh, using 3D photogrammetric documentation technique as a method for non-expert 3D data collection. And with that, I will stop and thank you for listening. Many, many thanks, uh, Gorgios. A lot of uh, a lot of suggestions, of inputs, uh, and uh, maybe we can uh, talk about uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, in a couple of minutes, okay, uh, wonderful, uh, Mario Mattis from Ghent. It's a pleasure to have you here. You are you are here if you are here. Mario. I'm here. Okay, Mario. Hi. <laughs> okay, I can start. Yeah. My screen. When you want. Perfect. So it's okay. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, good morning from uh, Ghent in Belgium. Um, long time ago, when I was a little boy, I loved to um, to look at uh, the comic strips of uh, Suske and Wiske, uh, because Belgium is a country of uh, comic strips. strips. And in one of that albums, there was a uh, Professor Barabas who made his time machine at that time. So now I'm old enough uh, to be a time machine at myself. Uh, but um, during my career, I started uh, um, more than 30 years ago in the city of Ghent as an urban planner using uh, CAD, uh, the first uh, digital drawings in the city of Ghent. And uh, during all that, that time, um, the topic of, of my um, my research, my work was, was the same, but the, the name uh, the names of the, the topics uh, of that topic changed during uh, all that time. Um, during um, the period of 2009-2014, we got uh, we got uh, fund of, of Europe um, to work further on the innovative project. Um, and um, last year, we tried to um, to focus on co-creation. Um, working together with people in the city, with citizens, because we didn't get any money uh, since uh, 2015, I think. Uh, we have uh, two, three thousand euro uh, on the air to, to do the, the basic work, but uh, there is no big money to, to go further on. So we tried to, um, to connect older and younger people in, in all kinds of workshops uh, in the city. And some of them focused on, on history. Um, uh, there were people um, rebuilding uh, historical um, castles in city. This was the uh, castle of the, the emperor of uh, Europe, uh, the boss of Europe in the 16th century, in Princeton of uh, Ghent. Um, and in second uh, stage, the, um, the SketchUp models made by citizens were uh, rebuilt or um, integrated in Unity uh, game engines, because the focus is always on 3D, 4D, animation is important. And also um, the focus on transmedia storytelling, because we believe that uh, the com com um, combining different media, for instance, um, a singer songwriter uh, today who will sing a song, um, uh, make a video on the green tea and combine the, 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 the songs with, with uh, the old historical um, castle in, in a VR environment. So um, it motivates it motivates people, um, and we we um, put the results of uh, that co-creative project in uh, 4D viewer. Um, it's made without money. The only thing um, was done was uh, by software. We we use Skyline software, um, Terra Explorer uh, viewer, 
and um, the connection is made between geodata, pretty geodata, and um, Unity uh, builds, web builds. Um, so you can navigate through uh, different uh, periods um, of uh, the Gantt uh, history. But not, not only uh, focusing on the history, but also um, looking at the future. So we have projects where you can navigate uh, with the UFO, um, go back to, to history, and save cows uh, that were there in a uh, formal time. Um, important in our time uh, view is that we connect also the future in it. So all kinds of, of BIM um, applications, uh, uh, building uh, architecture and, and public space, uh, put them uh, all those things together in the time machine. So focus is always on animation because um, that's part of, of the, the living, living lab and the living time machine in our city, um, the growing of the, the trees, uh, traffic uh, and so on. Uh, an old elephant uh, who was um, um, doing some movement uh, um, actions uh, 100 years ago in the in in inter interior um, circus in the city. And- um, Mario, Mario, I'm sorry, just one question because we, we, we are still seeing the first, uh, yeah, yeah, the first slide. Oh. Uh, is it correct? I showed uh, oh, no. 15 slides. <laughs> yeah, because we see the the the, the whole presentation uh, counting more or less uh, 17 something like this, but we 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 are stuck on the first one. We we I share know. my screen yeah. and I don't know what is wrong. Is it this one? Okay, okay, right. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. You didn't see all those pictures. Uh, that's a pity. Okay, now now it takes sense. Uh, okay, wonderful. Yeah. I can put the, the slideshow in the, <laughs> in the chat, for instance. So I, I walked through the, the slides. This, this was the first one, the second one, and it's pity you didn't see all those pictures. Um, the second one, a co-creation, um, the historical buildings in 3D, um, Unity files, storytelling, um, the 4D viewer, a medieval center of the city, a combination of the future and the history, uh, BIM aspects and architecture and uh, spatial development, uh, animation and all the, all that stuff. And that was uh, the last focus of my story, um, giving people a co-creation platform in 3D and, and 4D so they can um, rebuild public space in the city uh, with very high detail. So it is also used in VR applications um, online and uh, with VR glasses. Uh, we have a bike simulator to to navigate through the future and all that stuff together we we have now old uh, 3d projects um from the 90s 97 uh, and so on uh, looking to the future and now we can look back to these old projects in 4d and in 3d um, to see um how it, it was dreamed uh, 20 years ago and realized at this moment and those the data sets are all uh, at this moment used also for the um, education, for instance, uh, climate change um, in different projects. Um, my whole story and pictures, uh, you can read that, uh, this uh, academic article, part of uh, my research. And you can also see what is a backpipe model uh, if you um, look at those, this, uh, this article. So if you can dream it, you can uh, draw it in 3D. Uh, this is my story. Sorry for the, um, yeah, the, uh, the PowerPoint disaster. <laughs> thanks. Many, many thanks. Very, very interesting and interesting. A lot of, uh, again, a lot of, uh, of topics on the table. Um, Ferdinand from Jena in Dresden, are you here? Yeah. I'm here. Hello. Okay. Hi, Ferdinand. So, uh, I'm trying to share my screen. So you should see my browser right now. Is this correct? Yeah. Okay. We, we see some and questions now <laughs> and now you see the, uh, the presentation. You can, you can also always try the second slide. So we, uh, we are sure it's, it works. It works, right? 
uh, we see Do you uh, see the presentation? No, I think that we are seeing the no. poll with the, okay. with the presentation the about the poll. So maybe. Uh, ah, okay, okay, d'accord. <laughs> uh, now, can you see it now? No. Uh, not sure. No, we are okay. on still uh, on the on the first one. Okay. No. Okay. Again. Now, can you see now? uh yes yeah works. okay right <laughs> so thank you thank you for the invitation um i will briefly present uh, two of our projects um done in uh, at the TU dresden the urban history for d project and our uh, main project we are working right now on is the kultur erbe for the project uh, at the fsu you know um because of the short time i think i will mainly show uh, the videos of the project and hope my bandwidth is okay <laughs> so you can see most of the important parts uh, the project background for the first project um, was uh, it was developed by a junior research group urban history for d so there were a lot of research questions from the uh, historical architectural perspective um, for example how does a city develop um, on an architectural point of view then we have the methodological perspectives um, how can we um, identify use cases for 3D and 4D models and the informational technical per perspective? How can we, um, for example, um, derive the position of, a, of an historical image? Um, the project is already completed and the, um, the website is online and you can visualize the result of the industry for the project here. And I will briefly short, uh, show a short video. So, as you can see here, we have the historic uh, or the city of Dresden with a uh, city map underlying um, a historical city map and a lot of oriented historical images. On the top, uh, you have a time slider for the buildings, for the historical maps, and for the images. And you can skip between uh, different points of time and can have um, 3D models of different points in time. You can also uh, filter for the uh, images. You can uh, jump into the perspective of, of the historical images and have an overlay of how the city looked like, uh, for example, uh, in this case, 100 years ago. So um, this church is not um, present anymore. And there were many uh, research questions uh, on this project. So um, what was the perspective the, the photographer photographers um, took the most of what was the most interesting spot and we um, were able to visualize um, this through this uh, 4D browser environment. And um, we took the knowledge to our uh, next project, the uh, Kultur App 4D, which translates uh, to Cultural Heritage 4D. And the project is still on the run. And there we were trying to implement this 4D perspective um, into a virtual reality environment that should not be uh, only working on a browser on the internet, but also on your mobile device so do, that you can dive into the city uh, with your mobile device and see the historical city right in front of you popping up. And as you can see here on the right side, Susanne, um, as a member of our project group, um, is also there for the user experience design. And we are also trying to implement now stories uh, that you can follow through the city. Again, I will show a short video of the application. So this is really in VR, uh, VR if you are standing um, in Jena uh, at this point, but you can also open the application anywhere uh, on the world as we are um, loading OSM models. The only part you won't have in the application at the moment are the historical images because they, uh, we only have access to historical images of Vienna. And now there you are standing in the city and the historical images are, and the models are um, shown in real time and uh, the, the historical images texturize the um, 3D models. And in the last step, you can see the, um, the place um, uh, how it looks uh, today. So there's also a time slider and you go to 2000 and this is how it looks today. Um, uh, out of these projects, there were a lot of um, 
uh, things that came to our minds. We want to integrate more city models into our applications and more historical photographs. And uh, in the recent project I showed, we also managed to implement uh, city tours um, generated by users. We had um, city tours that were generated by two student groups. And we also went into one school and asked uh, uh, nine-year-old uh, pupils um, to look for information of the city of Jena and integrate it in our application. And as, a, as a, another project, we um, want to enrich this application with uh, more text, more models, and more information, general information. So uh, that's it. Uh, the, the applications are already online and uh, thank you for your attention. Many, many thanks, uh, Ferdinand. Um, as uh, Simon uh, did uh, said, of course, it's very interesting the idea that the code is also open. This is, this is important. And maybe if we run uh, quickly, we can uh, talk about also uh, uh after okay um valerie uh Gouet brunet from paris with the project allegoria valerie are you here yes. hello good morning everyone hello, okay everyone. i try to share my screen <clears throat> can you see it yeah right it's okay for you Okay, so good morning, everyone. I'm Valérie Gouy-Brunet from uh, the French Mapping Agency and also uh, University Gustave Eiffel. And I will talk uh, this morning uh, about the project uh, Allegoria, which is a project funded by the French Research Agency and uh, which shares a lot of uh, things uh, with the, uh, the other project presented be, uh, before. So uh, in this project, uh, we are about 20 people from uh, different communities. We are people, researchers from uh, computer science, machine learning, computer graphics, and also researchers from uh, social, science, social sciences. And uh, we uh, include in the project also several providers of uh, photographs, in particular the French uh, Archive National. Uh, the French Mapping Agency uh, collections, and also a museum, which is a museum and is for Nieps, uh, located in the center of France. And so, um, <clears throat> Allegoria uh, means advanced linking and exploitation of digitized uh, geographical iconographic heritage. So we are interested in the management of a collection of RAL old photographs as those as you can see here. But we work at large scale. So the idea is to be able to automatically or semi-automatically manage those, uh, those uh, collections. Um, <clears throat> those collections provide a unique point of view on our territory and its evolution. Uh, so it concerns a, a vertical imagery, as you can see on the right, but mainly we focus in the project on oblique imagery, the, the bird view, uh, where you can have a lot of information about a city, um, a neighborhood, um, but also some details about this, uh, this, lo this location. Uh, our observation was the fact that these collections are spread over the whole territory. Generally, they are in silos within GLAMS, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And generally, they are uh, poorly structured and interconnected. You can have one photo that shows one location in one uh, GLAM and another photo taken at a similar or different period that shows the same area. And those photos does not know, do not know each other. So we wanted to try to structure better to make connections between this information. And in general, they're associated with basic, very basic cons consultation tools. Uh, here you can just have an overview of the amount of data we are working with. It is spread on the, the whole territory, to, territory, and we work with uh, around 100,000 uh, photographs, uh, which comes from uh, different uh, um, <clears throat> GLAM. So we have, for example, the Archive National, you, you see uh, here, 
also a collection from uh, Museum Missy Fornieps and also images from, images from uh, the French mapping agents. And you, you see that this collection share similar location, but at different uh, temporal periods. And so what uh, we are proposing in this project, we, we propose two kinds of tools. The first one is a web-based multimodal search engine. So uh, in this collection, you can uh, search by content. I can quickly show you an example. You can uh, select, uh, for example, this image. I don't know if you see my mouse, but it's on the right. It is named the query. And you can see this, you can show this example and use it to, uh, to browse all the collections you have. And uh, the system retrieves all similar images according to criteria that you, we have learned, of course, to date with machine learning and things uh, like that. We can also uh, browse uh, the collections, of course, by metadata, and it represents, it has represented a lot, a lot of, of very hard work in this project, in particular with the, with the collaboration with the National Archives, because as you can imagine, this collection um, do not have the same kind of metadata. With the Archive National, you can share, we can have metadata society with a lot of semantic, while with the French Mapping Agency, the information associated with the, with the photographs are more, um, I could say, geometrical. So it was a big work to be able to, uh, to make us, to standardize everything uh, in the project. So we have built a distributed uh, search engine, which work at large scale. You can use um, a, a large amount of data. Currently, uh, the, I have a, a, a screenshot after we have 50,000 uh, 50, 50, images, but it's, it's totally uh, scalable. And the images can be um, queried uh, in a remote way. That means that, that the system is installed in a cloud, but it is not necessary to have the images on the cloud. We just need to have the descriptions, the content-based descriptions on the cloud, and we can query uh, remote collections, uh, which uh, stay in the, uh, in the museum, for, uh, for example. So here you can see an, uh, an example an example of our system. Here it's a query by content on this uh, uh, photograph, which comes the city of Caen uh, in, France, in France, and which is uh, located in the Museum Nicephornieps. And the system can retrieve by decreasing order of similarities other images, hopefully of the same uh, location. Uh, but you see which, uh, which come from uh, different uh, collections. And uh, this uh, use cases is uh, exploited by the French National Archives to be able to interconnect uh, the data through collections and providers with the idea of uh, following the evolution of uh, an area during the French reconstruction period. They were very interested in this uh, temporal uh, period. Uh, what we propose again also uh, is a web-based navigation uh, platform. You can use it uh, everywhere on your, uh, on your laptop, which allows uh, the online co-visualization of heterogeneous multi-date uh, data, as you can see in the, in the, in the, in the example on the, on the left, for example, you have different kinds of vectorial photographic uh, semantic information. And you can uh, interact with this uh, sp special temporal tool uh, at large scale. So it works. Um, we, you can start from the globe, the globe view, and you can zoom, and you can manage the collection at the different scale. For example, he, here you have a, a, a very general view of the distribution of the photo of the photos which have been located and put in the in the system. Here you have an overview on the, on, on the right with pyramids that show the orientation, the, the perspective of the, of the views with a view of, uh, with the possibility of searching into them into a, a, through a carousel. And on the left, you, you have also different kinds of free uh, viewpoints of, uh, of, the, of the data.
I'm sorry, Valerie, just one yeah. minute because we are very, very uh, in late. I'm very okay, sorry. Okay, I'll finish with uh, this slide. So uh, now, uh, uh, one example of application with uh, the Museum Nice for Nieps of this uh, work for the municipality of uh, Chalon sur Saône. You can see the images. Some of them have been located using uh, uh, an automatic or semi-automatic tool that work on the web. And you can uh, you can uh, have a view of uh, this collection, and you, you can also interact with uh, with them. So that's all for me. Uh, if you want to have more detail, of course, contact me, or you can also go on the website of the of the project. Many thanks. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Valerie. So it's very impressive. Uh, so uh, we have more or less 10 minutes if you want then to, to, to skip on the, on the main session. Um, what we can do is that maybe we can just take around, um, around uh, uh, the table uh, with one, two questions, questions uh, each uh, of you. Um, and just a brief remind the fact that we are also uh, set up the RFCs for the 3D, 4D processing. Okay, so this is very interesting for for uh, for everyone because it's, it could be a good occasion for uh, trying to share all the experiences in terms of technological issues, but also uh, political one ones which we can if we can um, call them. Uh, uh, in, the, in this way. Um, okay, maybe the first, uh, so we, we have seen that it's the city and the territory is a complex object, object. There's a lot of layers. There's the archaeology, so there's the past. There's the ecology, the urbanism, the urban monitoring. So there's a lot of, uh, of uh, um, directions that we can take when we decide to, uh, to move for, for a project. Uh, essentially, we try to know the past, to represent the past, maybe take the bridge uh, with the present and for, for the future, and then plan also the future. This is the other component that is very important when we approach uh, the idea of a sort of digital twins for, or, or of the future of the present of, of cities. So, um, there's two main axes of discussion that we can open. The first is what is the possibility to collaborate with public actors, because we know that we, when we talk about 3D and 4D projects, they, they, they are really long term projects, right? More than in other fields, I think. So there's a long pl planning of actions and of, of uh, te uh, technological developments. And then what are the technological issues that are still open? For example, the web uh, application for seeing in real time or not in real time 3D models, uh, the integrating uh, the integration of time, so this is also another uh, key aspect, of course. So there's some, some about technology that is uh, still open, of course. So maybe we can uh, just start uh, asking, I don't know, to Mario or Georgios or uh, Simon uh, and uh, Toine that are uh, talked um, first. Uh, what is the collaboration with public authors? It, it could be a good way for given the, the good sustainability to the project, even in uh, financial terms or not. And then what are for you, uh, follow, follow, following you, the still open technological aspects that are not still solved by you or some, someone others? Uh, who wants to take uh, the flow? Mario. Go ahead. In uh, my opinion, um, there is uh, never a problem with technology. Um, if you have a 3D model, you can convert it to another format. So that can be solved. But the big problem is, in my opinion, to convince other parties uh, to, to give 3D data. For instance, architects. I'm an architect, and I know that most architects don't uh, want to share their 3D model because it's um, 
kind of uh, big work to to make a new design and they they will not uh, put it in a 3d model so for me and that's for the future but all, also for history it's not evident to um, to integrate data not because uh, of a technical problem but because of uh, uh, availability of data yeah then the, the same is true in uh, in the utrecht uh, area uh, so we face the same problems um, and uh, there is now kind of uh, agreement that we should adopt the license uh, licensing um, uh, procedure so people who have made 3d models uh, that they will uh, give in license the 3d model um, but that's so it's uh, because it's painstaking work to do the reconstruction for everybody uh, and then uh, you feel ownership and it's hard to uh, share it this is definitely true yeah here as well in this part of the mediterranean i i wanted also to uh, add another uh, aspect which has to do with uh, the uh, onboarding of the the local uh, authorities and the, the various uh, public uh, uh, bodies uh, for them obviously any kind of uh, real time or near real time uh, dynamic uh, simulation uh, and visualization of the of the space of the city is interesting and they they are willing to uh, to to use it but uh, the at, at least for some parts of the world they they lack the the capacity to do so so they lack the so any kind of initiative uh, needs to take into consideration that uh, the at least the specific interface and visualization that will uh, be addressed to the the public uh, bodies and the public authorities will have to co-develop with their uh, officers or their representatives in a sense that they need to be trained 